Have you ever wondered why your SQL queries behave unexpectedly, even when you follow what you've been taught? Ever had the frustrating experience of getting an error because you used an alias in your WHERE clause? The thing is, the way you write SQL isn't always the way it's executed. In this video, I'll go through my biggest game changer when I started learning SQL, understanding the order of execution. Here's the thing. One of the first concepts you're taught when learning SQL is the order of operations, or what we like to call the big six. Select, from, where, group by, having, order by. But what you don't learn, that's not the order your SQL query is executed in. Let's look at a query an analyst at a retail company might write. In this query, we want to return the customer's user ID, name, and email address, along with their most recent order date and the total they've spent with us. To get that, we're using the customers and orders tables. We only want to look at orders that have happened on or after June 3rd, 2025, and only return customers where their total spend with us is $75 or more in that time period. Lastly, we want to look at customers with the highest spend first. Imagine a database full of tables like products, orders, employees, inventory, and customers. After we hit run on our query, this is what goes on in the background. First up, our table or tables are identified in the from clause. They're then combined with a join. In this example, we're interested in the customers table and the orders table, and we want to join them based on a shared user ID. Once our tables have been joined, next is the where clause, which filters individual rows based on specific conditions. Here, we want to remove any orders where the date is before June 3rd, 2025. After removing those rows, the group by clause organizes our remaining rows into groups based on specified columns. We're grouping our data in this example by user ID, name, and email. Then the having clause filters out groups of rows based on your conditions. This is similar to the where clause, but for groups. In this example, we're filtering out any user IDs where the total amount they've paid in a specified timeframe is less than $75. Only then do we select the columns that we're interested in. Here, we're only looking at the user ID, name, email address, our most recent or max order date, and the total amount the customer has spent with us in this specified timeframe. The last step here is the order by clause. In this query, we want to order by the total spent in descending order, meaning from highest to lowest. If we look back at the original query, the having clause used some amount, but the order clause used the alias total spent. That's because the select clause where the alias is identified happens after having and before order by. And that's exactly why you can use an alias in your order by, but you'll run into errors if you try to use one in your where or having clauses. And there you go, the SQL order of execution. First, your tables are identified and joined, setting up your data set. Next, your individual rows are filtered, narrowing down your initial results. Then your rows are grouped, preparing for aggregation. After that, groups of rows are filtered out based on those aggregations. Only then are your columns selected, choosing what you actually want to see. And finally, your data is sorted, arranging your final results. Understanding the order of execution helps you troubleshoot, write more efficient queries, and truly master SQL. I'm Lauren from Maven Analytics. Thanks for watching, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. See you in the next one.